I want to start off by saying that time is not the issue here. Five minutes, the five minute devotional is not the problem. The issue is that I want you to believe and live into the truth that Jesus is available to you personally and you don't need a mediator to hear him, to talk with him, and to know him. I'm going to be making some generalizations in this video. That's just the nature of talking about these things. So, of course, there are always exceptions. There are always special cases. If this doesn't apply to you, if you know that you're in a good spot and this isn't for you, stick with that. If you are listening to the Holy Spirit and a thing that you're doing goes against scripture, then you're good. With all that said, I want to talk about what I think happens a lot of the time. I see that there's really two problems with short devotionals, the content of the devotional and the way that it's used. First, let's just talk about the content. When I go to the bookstore, like a physical real bookstore, or I guess even Amazon list of popular Christian books, I see that every celebrity Christian has a new five minute devotional out. And I look at those and I think we don't need more devotional books. I don't think we're in need of more brief surface level content in the Christian world today, at least in the West. What I'm talking about is definitely not all devotional books, but I think you know the ones that I'm talking about. They have pretty covers or an attractive face or an attractive couple but the inside isn't everything you would want it to be. I was talking to a friend recently and we were commiserating over the fact that particularly for Christian women, there is not a lot out there of in-depth content. And we're tired of hearing that we're beautiful and that we're enough and that we're good just the way we are. All of those messages are great, but we want to go deeper. We want theology and to dig into the scriptures and into life with God that equips us for the challenges of our time and instruction on how to live a deeper life with God that is more than just feeling good about myself. It's really hard to get that in a five minute reading, honestly. I know I already mentioned that there's going to be exceptions to this, but I do want to particularly put in a caveat for new Christians here. If you have just recently started following Jesus, please take advantage of resources you haven't gotten before. Those things might feel older or trite to me, but that's because I've grown up in the church and I've been hearing those things for a long time. But if you didn't have that experience, then those resources are for you and I want you to take advantage of that. So please don't let this be something that makes you feel guilty about learning those things for the first time or really enjoying those resources. Wherever we are in our relationship with Christ, we need direct nourishment and life from the Word of God. We need to get into His Word, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, to be equipped for a life that is worthy of the calling that we have received as Christians. I know that it can be scary and overwhelming at times, to read the Bible on your own and to listen to God's voice, but he has given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth and to understand these things. In Psalm 1, the writer tells us, the person who is blessed is one that meditates on God's law day and night. That should characterize us as the people of God, that we spend rich, deep time in his word, thinking on it, asking for the Holy Spirit to instruct us to open our hearts to receiving it. We need deeper time. It doesn't have to be a lot of scripture. Like I think sometimes we make the mistake that I have to read this whole book in one sitting. And honestly, I think that might be the opposite of what I'm saying. I'm talking about that time where maybe you literally read one verse and you just, you repeat that verse, 
you pray that verse, you ask God to show you what he wants you to receive in that. Sometimes it's a verse, sometimes it's a chapter, sometimes it's many chapters or even a whole book, but the length is not the issue here. Meditation can be a scary word for Western Christians because we often hear that word associated with things like Hinduism or Buddhism, but in reality, meditation is a very Christian word, a very righteous word. We are instructed to meditate on God's law, and what that means is allowing God to open our hearts and our minds not to be emptied, but to fill us with his word and his spirit. Those are my concerns about content, but I also have concerns about the way that we are receiving the information from short devotionals. Beyond devotionals possibly being a stumbling block to reading God's word for ourselves, I think there becomes an issue when all of the spiritual nourishment that we are receiving is mediated between another person, ourselves and God. There's always a person feeding us, giving us the information, sharing what they're learning from God, and we're never receiving from God ourselves. When we get stuck on short bites of information from other people following Jesus, I'm afraid that very soon we're going to run into situations in life in which those tiny bites of nourishment are not going to be enough to keep us sustained from the circumstances that we are going to face. When you are really going through it, when the things of life get seriously hard, the real, real hard, even suffering of life, those things are not enough anymore. And why don't we take advantage of the fact that Jesus lived and died to give us direct access to God throughout the Old Testament and before Jesus' death and resurrection, we needed high priests, we needed sacrifices, we needed all of these things to come between us and God and try to mediate that relationship. And Jesus brought the gift that we can know God ourselves with no one and nothing in between. And when we forfeit that gift, we are selling ourselves and God and what he wants to do in our lives short. Hebrews 4 tells us that Jesus hears and empathizes with our weaknesses because he lived life here on earth. He's constantly praying for us, interceding for us, and that it's at his throne that we receive grace and mercy so we can approach his throne confidently. We don't need anyone to do that for us. A devotional can't give mercy. A podcast sermon can't give grace. Those are wonderful things that I love. I enjoy. I like listening to podcasts. I love my pastor sermons at church and those are so helpful, but they're not the only thing. Jesus died and rose to give me direct access to the Father and I don't want us to take that for granted. The podcasts that we listen to, the devotionals and the books that we read, all of those things should be pointing us to Jesus to spend intentional communion and time with him to know him personally. Maybe when you clicked on this video, you thought I was going to say that time was the issue here, that five minutes isn't enough. And I will say that I think as you grow in your relationship with the Lord, you're going to find yourself desiring to be in the presence of God for longer than that, to let him do that deep work in our hearts and our minds. That takes time. And just like getting to know a friend, we need time with God. The problem isn't the amount of time, though. The problem is that we have traded intimacy with our Savior for convenience. I say all of this not to bring shame to anybody. 
I know sometimes I listen to these and I'm like, you're right. I need to just read my Bible for 10 hours a day and how could I ever want anything less? But that's hard. It takes a lot of energy and time. And especially sometimes we just don't really know where to start. First, I just want to release you of any shame that's not from God. I hope that you can receive this as something that might be stirring your affections for Jesus, that might be guiding you to a different way of experiencing your relationship with Christ. If you're at the place where you're just not sure how to go about it, I do want to offer a couple of pieces of advice for things that can help you along the way. First off, you need to be in a community of believers. We all need to be surrounded by people who are following Jesus. Particularly, we need time with people who are further down the path with Jesus, know him more, have been through the challenges and the things that we're facing, and can give us wisdom on how to handle those things. Within a community, they can give you close, one-on-one, -on -one, personalized relationship. That's a big part of it. But the knowing that comes with those relationships allows them to teach you really one-on-one -on -one or even in just a small group context how to pursue deeper life with God. I know spending time with women and men who are more mature in their relationship with Jesus have been following Jesus for longer. Even if they don't give me any teaching, even if they never say, this is what you should do to have a relationship with Jesus. Just being around them, seeing the ways that they live their lives, the, the rhythms of their family time, their personal time, their work, all of those things instruct me, even if not through explicit teaching, on how to grow in my relationship with Christ. So wherever you are in your relationship with God, get plugged into a church, join a small group, join a ministry, and find yourself surrounded by other people who want to grow. Secondly, we don't have to figure out how to do this just with human help. We can ask God directly to come into our hearts and our minds and show us how to do these things, how to understand the Word of God, how to pray in a way that is beyond just the superficial prayers that we've heard in our lifetime and really go deep with him. I know that sometimes we want to think like, if I could just read the right book, if I could just find the right article or the right sermon, then I would be able to fix this problem in my life. And usually going to God and asking him to show me is one of my last resorts. And I don't know why that is. Ultimately, I think it's not trusting him the way that I should. He is the greatest teacher who ever lived. Jesus is a teacher at heart. He can show us in ways that nobody else can the things that need to happen in our hearts and our lives to understand him more and to go deeper with him. Also in Psalm 1, it talks about being like a tree rooted by streams of water that are constantly bringing renewal and refreshment. My pastor just a couple of weeks ago, yes, I'm going to cite a sermon here, even though I'm talking about knowing God directly. This is how God uses those resources to, to move us and to grow us. He mentioned that trees cannot plant themselves. Trees cannot move themselves to get closer to a source of water, but they have to have a planter or someone to move them. We should ask God that if we feel like we're not planted by streams of water and we're not getting that refreshment and renewal of soul, then to ask God, Lord, plant me by streams of water that I would know you and be blessed for it. And so I've really been thinking on that, that I don't have to be the one to pull myself up by my bootstraps and figure these things out on my own, but I have access to God who can move my heart and change my mind in ways that I can never do on my own. 
Now, I do want to offer some resources that can help guide you in this. If maybe you're in the process of finding community or you're just looking for more written material to help you along, I do want to offer a couple of things that I think are really good resources to help give you the space to know God for yourself. Again, it's not wrong to use resources. They are good things, but they aren't the only thing. They aren't the main thing. That's Jesus. So one of those things is the Daily Grace Company. They create Bible studies and resources that help you dig deeper into the Word of God and help you understand it. They are really good at balancing the original context of a text along with how it applies to our life now. Usually their Bible studies have you move through either a book of the Bible or a topic and it takes you through that with scripture reading, with some comments on that scripture, and then it opens up questions and space for you to listen to the Holy Spirit, to pray through these things, and again, to receive that nourishment from God himself instead of just reading their words. They are constantly having good sales too. They are always having like five and $10 sales. But their resources are very affordable, very accessible. I really like Daily Grace Company a lot. Another resource that I really like to use is the author Phyllis Tickle's Daily Hours Pocket Sized book. I'll link it down below if you're interested. Praying the hours is something that I didn't start until a couple of years ago, but basically it is going through at different points in your day, according to the day or whatever prayer book you're using. And it's a way of looking at prayers that have been written by others that help you dig deep into parts of your heart that maybe you haven't before. It is also a wonderful way to keep yourself abiding in Jesus throughout the day by having certain times that you pray throughout the day, stopping, okay, when I first wake up, when I get to work, when I take my lunch hour, when I get home from work, stopping and praying through those moments helps me to turn my attention back toward God and to abide more deeply in His presence. I also think that written prayers are something that have been really neglected by the American church. We think somehow they're less earnest or real if we're praying prayers written by others, but I find so much that they are a wonderful jumping off point to think through things and pray through things that I probably wouldn't have done if I was just praying extemporaneously or on my own. So I hope this video has given you some things to think about. I'm not bashing anybody's devotional books. I like some devotions. One of my favorites, if you do want one, is Streams in the Desert. That's a great one that's been used by people for many, many years. I especially like older devotionals, I will admit that. I think they tend to go a little bit deeper. But ultimately, I hope you've heard that it's not about the book that you're using or even the exact amount of time that you're putting in, but the way that we understand our relationship with God. We definitely need others in our lives to help guide us and show us the way, and that is the beauty of God's church and the body of Christ. But we can also receive directly from God according to his scripture, balanced by the wisdom of those around us in the faith. And we can know him personally, not just mediated through others and not just in short bursts, but we can, we are very capable of drinking deeply from the well of Jesus and being satisfied in our hunger and thirst for righteousness. So let me know how are some ways that you like to practice intimacy with God to receive directly from Jesus. I'd love to hear about some of your practices and habits below. Let me know if you have any questions about how to do that. I'd love to chime in in the comments and I hope to see you in the next video soon.